Thank you, President, Prime Minister. The war Putin is waging is targeted against Ukraine, shelling civilian areas and attacking refugees. But his war is also meant against Europe as a whole. Putin intends to destroy the post-Cold War European security architecture. Putin is waging a war against democracy, rule of law, and freedoms, which are universal values. As European Union, as union built for peace, we must act for the European security. At European level, we need to make sure that the Member States' defence is functioning, that investments are compatible with one another, that pooling and sharing finally gets implemented, and that we have common standards so equipment cannot be used by one state alone. But colleagues, if we are exclusively thinking about the army when saying defense and security, then we don't see the whole picture. Security means much more. It means energy security and energy independence. We need to get rid of the dependence on Russia's fossil fuels and raw materials, be it gas, oil, coal, or uranium. We have plenty of sun and wind to use on our own. We have the technology at hand. We need to reduce our consumption and speed up FIT 455, investing massively in renewables, in energy efficiency, and in energy saving. Security also means civil protection. In the last years and decades, much of the protective infrastructure in Europe has been neglected. Floods and wildfires in the recent years have already shown us the lack of preparedness. The EU and its member states need to urgently work on how to, protectively protect, how to effectively protect citizens. Security also means to make sure that Europe's critical infrastructure is well-functioning, well-stocked and in public hands. The same goes for the cybersecurity and our digital infrastructure and data. We need to talk about resilient societies, about communities that help each other and are educated to withstand misinformation campaigns and to spot fake news. And security for Europe means solidarity among member states, about sharing the efforts, for example, for welcoming the many people fleeing Ukraine. They need to be housed, they need medical care, the children need to go to school. And that will need a shared effort by all member states and not just a few. We have seen it in the last two weeks. When we act together, we are strong. This is the lesson that we have to carry forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Keller.